Well, hi, everybody. It's David George Brook, that gratitude guy with yet another special guest on my gratitude podcast interview regarding the pandemic. And I was thinking about this young man that I met a number of years ago, probably, gosh, six or eight or 10 years ago now or something. Mm -hmm. Hit it off immediately. I thought, man, I got to stay friends with this guy. He's a sharp young man. His name is Michael Charest. He's out of Dayton, Ohio. Michael, welcome to the podcast. Hey, good to be here. If I don't get another compliment today, it's okay. That's good enough. I'm a young man. Thank you. <laughs> you, bet, you bet. Which either says how young you are or how old I am. One of the two or both. Or something Somewhere like probably in between. <laughs> in between. So first question I have, and I've mentioned this to several people prior to these interviews, is just about maybe how somebody is coping with something or the thoughts and ideas and so forth. So first question is, what has been your best coping mechanism to deal with this whole pandemic these last five or six weeks? Wow, awesome. Uh, can I say two quickies? One is, one is working. I, mm -hmm. I'm working and so focusing on the business of, of earning a living for myself through service of others. So helping other people and keeping the business going and running and focus on that. And then two, I just looked out there, getting outside. Get, mm -hmm. I'd get that fresh air because um, it is kind of easy to stay inside more. And that's, that's true. Uh, every time I go outside, I feel better. So those that's, are. Um, that's a good one because I think there's strength in numbers. I've heard the exercise piece to get outside, get the fresh air a lot. And so that is really, really great because you, you got to have a decent coping mechanism because this is clearly unprecedented. Oh, you know, it's ever unbelievable. Happened. We were talking today. <clears throat> and I started by saying this is unprecedented. And then I said, it's unprecedented in our lifetime anyway. Yeah, you know, yeah. Probably the closest thing to the depression that our grand, uh, parents, grandparents went through. It's, totally. it's unbelievable. You know? Totally, totally agree. So, so you know me as that gratitude guy. And I think if you think about what you're grateful for, has it changed what you're grateful for today versus five or six weeks ago leading into this? Have you noticed yes. that shifted at all? How has that changed? In fact, I, I'm mad at myself. I wanted to grab my gratitude journal that I got you. I've already got one full one, and I'm working on the second one. So thank you. And I wanted to show it, and I didn't grab it. But yes, it has. I'm, and I, I spend every morning, just like you advise, first thing in the morning, working on gratitude. And what, how it's changed is just fact. No matter how much we focus on gratitude, we forget the things that we take for granted. And so now it's like, you know, I'm thankful that we can still go outside and right. have been, or, you know, I'm thankful for food and mm -hmm. even really understanding and appreciating exactly how food goes from being created or grown to coming to my house and all the people that need to be involved to our healthcare system. I mean, you know, I was in the hospital seven months ago for my neck. Oh, how wow. many people had to go to work to serve me that day. You know, right. I didn't really think about it. I did, and I was grateful for them, but now seeing what our healthcare workers are going through, mm -hmm. times more, so. Right. Wow, yeah, good, really point. Has. good point. It is interesting how it does kind of shift, and I think that one of the things that this has done for me and a number of people is help people to realign their priorities you know, and what they're grateful for, so that's, that's really true. And, and no doubt. I, and if I think about your life and the things that you've done and anything from being in the, the golf club world and Michael Rock's coaching and, and uh, bucket list and different things. You have a lot of things going on, always have. It's one of the things I thought was really neat when you and I met. And so any thoughts or tips or ideas or that type of thing for people that are stuck in their house or condo in terms of what they can maybe be doing during this sort of downtime, so to speak? Yeah. I mean, you know, obviously it's, they, these are things that have to be fun for you, but mm -hmm. Use the, I mean, again, for me, it's use the time to grow, right? You know, every, you, know you mentioned bucket list. I think 99% of people, at least those of us that are fortunate enough to not be worrying about putting shelter over our head and how we're going to feed ourselves, we have a bucket list. And it could be as simple as learning a foreign language or being a better parent to, to more exotic things like trips and travel and skydiving and things like that, but whatever they are, however many they are, perhaps use this time, just pick one off your list. And, you know, if you do have more time now and it's being spent different than it used to be spent, allow yourself to grow. Yeah. 
time. I mean, I, I know it's not always easy, but I, when I'm down and there are days where it's hard to get out of bed, mm -hmm. Michael, you want to be, you want to look back at this and be proud at how you handled it during this yeah. time. And so that's what I would say. In addition to the fun stuff, you know, spending yeah. time with your kids and doing puzzles or games and stuff, maybe there's something you can grow, grow with something that you've always wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great, great tip. And, and do you think in, in back to you personally, this time, this is going to end at some point and we don't know when we know it'll end at some point, it'll be a vaccine. It'll be some sort of step back into regular different levels back to society again, if you will. But is there anything that you're thinking about now that, boy, I'm going to hit the ground running when this thing is over, that's made you shift to maybe you're in your business world or even personal world too, about what you're going to do differently once this is over kind of formulating it now. For me, it's travel. I, I've always dreamed, and you and I have talked about this, I have places that I want to go and experiences that I want to have. And, uh, you know, I ask myself, if not now, when? More than ever. Like, what the, excuse me, I was going to say, <laughs> but like, what the hell am I waiting for? So right. when this ends, I'm on a plane. Um, I've not been to Paris. Paris is number one on my list. Excellent. There are many other places, but that's that's the biggie for me. I mean, I'm already blessed to spend quality time with my family and do other uh, things that add value to the world. So kind of a little bit selfish, but that's it for me. Well, which is why your bucket list effort is so important because I yeah. think about how I'm a lot older than you are, but it doesn't matter. It just flies by wherever we are in this <sighs> continuum. It's like, are you kidding me? How did I get to be this age all of a sudden? And it's gone by quick. So at least you can get to do those things that were on that bucket list or the things you wanted to do. So, so yeah. that's important. So, so yeah. last, <clears throat> excuse me, last question is, does Michael have a, um, sort of a quote or a saying or a sort of a mantra or something that is sort of overreaching of you in terms of how you run your life or if you had a philosophy, I guess I'd say too, um, that's getting you through this or has gotten you through life in general that you kind of look to, a, <clears throat> excuse me, during times like this? What a great question. That's, that's, that's a great one. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a quote that I learned in college, even before that. And then I take one minute to explain it, but it's, Take time to appreciate the little things in life because the big things may never come and then you've hung around for nothing. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like yeah. And yeah. just a quick explanation, I'm an optimist and I believe the big things will come. So mm -hmm. I don't, that, that quote can be taken a little negative. Like, what do you mean the big things won't come? I believe they will. But let's face it, not, not everybody accomplishes all their dreams. and. Mm -hmm to Paris may not come. We don't know what's going to happen later today or tomorrow. And right. so today, what, you know, that walk outside, that gratitude journal in the morning, taking the time to smell the roses, if you will, and be mindful of today while you pursue your bigger dreams, I think is the Nice. Nice. Right? really yeah. like that. And I see that too about, because I think some people, I'm a very optimistic uh, person and focus on gratitude. It helps you focus on what you have versus what you don't have and really look into the future and not worrying about the past too much. One another reason why you and I have connected so well over the years, but it is funny. There will always be the negative naysayers that, uh, you know, no matter what it is, they'll find out what's negative. And I used to joke about my dad. I'd say, good morning, dad. And he'd say, what's good about it? And I thought, man, how do you get an attitude like that? So yeah. I really like that. But I think it's, it's almost like, you know, focus on that. And then the, the big things may or may not come. But if they do, how phenomenally uh, great do you feel because you got to experience it? Because you can't appreciate high until you've seen low. There you go. So no. you got to take both. That's exactly gotta right. Take them both. You got to take them both. Well, just as I suspected, <clears throat> excuse me, some great tidbits and nuggets and chunks and everything like that. Michael, thank you so much for being on the podcast. I'm psyched. Thanks for having me. That was awesome. You bet. You bet.